I'm Nathan Bosher. I'm the safety and surface technician here at the museum. Um, and I take care of all our aircraft painting. So we're going to talk a bit about dope on aircraft this morning. Um, it's a very old system, but uh, it's from the Wright brothers' days and right up until present day where they are using it on light aircraft as well. So uh, it's a it's an old system, as I said, and our example aircraft for today is the Airspeed Oxford here, built in 1945 on a 1934 design, and it is completely doped on the outside. Um, and you might think it's dope uh, brown and green, but it's actually red and silver. So I'll talk to you about how we apply that and uh, the reasons behind it. Okay, so on the Oxford, we've got the two different sorts of doped fabric surfaces that you find on most of these older aircraft. The aircraft itself is mostly made of wood and plywood. So it's, it's spruce structure with birch ply over the top. The ply then has to be sanded and doped. So we then put fabric over that and that gives the uh, aircraft good strength uh, on top of just the wood and it also waterproofs it as well. So that's the closed structure of the aircraft which is covered in plywood. Then we have the flight controls which you want to be nice and light, there's no uh, electronic or hydraulic help on these, it's all muscle power. So the lightness of the uh, flight controls is what we really needed in those days. So this is what we call an open structure, so it has ribs much like the human body, and then has a skin stretched over the top, which once again is doped fabric. So in this case, uh, on both surfaces, we use red dope and silver dope. I'll talk to you uh, about those types of dope um, shortly. So the dopes we're using on this aircraft, or have been using since it was uh, first built, is nitrate cellulose dope. Um, this was very widespread use right up until the 50s where they uh, swapped over to butyrate dopes but both dopes have their issues with uh, aircraft uh, maintainability if you like but the biggest problem with the nitrate dopes was it's highly flammable so you've got an aircraft made of wood covered in fabric and then highly flammable paint systems put over the top of it so they switched to a butyrate dope, which is not quite so flammable, but the problem with the butyrate was it never stopped shrinking and could actually damage the aircraft. So it's fallen back out of favour, and especially for our museum type work, we want the original uh, type dopes put on it, and something that's not gonna, in the long term, damage our airframe, so we'll have to continually fix it or replace the fabric. Okay, so on these surfaces, we start with uh, just our bare fabrics. So we've got two types of fabrics. On the wooden surface, we have modapalum. So it's just a uh, unbleached fine weave cotton, and that is on all these closed wooden surfaces over the top of the plywood. On our flight controls, we have Irish linen. Now, you may have heard the, the term Irish linen. It is generally what is uh, used these days for making high-end um, handkerchiefs and linen products like that. So it's not cheap. It's about $100 a metre, um, plus GST, plus shipping, because it's all made on the other side of the world. So uh, Irish linen on open structure, we dap them over our first ply. And that's uh, the two different sorts of fabric we use on these. So the fabric is stretched over and shrunk slightly using uh, water because it is a natural product. Um, so it, it has to be shrunk uh, manually. It can't be shrunk these days like the, uh, the modern equivalents where they just use a basically a steam iron and shrink it that way. So it has to be stretched evenly. And then of course, when we do the doping, that has to be put on very evenly as well. Um, otherwise we run into issues of paint cracking and the shrinkage of it can actually warp panels or the fabric and break the structure. So with this, we would start with just a single coat of red dope, which is worked into the weave of the fabric. We use a, uh, a dope container like this, which is like a bird bath. It just continually feeds our dope down and we would just work the dope into the fabric until it is uniformly 
soaked through. If it's not uniform, that's uh, said when we run into the, the trouble of the shrinkage happening. So once that's worked in, they actually take an old piece of cloth that's soaked in, in dope and, and solvent. We polish it each time. So for each coat we put on, we polish. And later on, when we get the heavier coats on, we can actually use sandpaper. Uh, with the fabric open structure, we tend to just use the rags to polish it. So it will get at least three coats of the red dope into the fabric, and then there will be aluminium dope or the silver dope goes over the top of that. And then the decorative colours, in this case camouflage, will go over the top of that again. So the trick is to have it enough dope coverage to strengthen and stretch the fabric correctly without making it too heavy, thus making the aircraft heavier and also leading to problems with cracking. Okay, so we've got some samples of the doped and undoped fabric. We start with our Irish linen, and then once it is doped, you can see the weave on that, how it has been uh, worked in. The dope's uh, worked all the way through the fabric, and that is the red dope that goes on first. Eventually, it gets its uh, colour on the outside. You can just see flecks of the silver dope underneath that uh, dark brown paint. So, and you can also see that it has turned that fabric almost into uh, a thin sheet of wood. So, a bigger, better example, or a bigger example, this is clear dope, which would be used on things like the sop with pup on the undersides. That is the fabric end that hasn't been doped. And then we've got that lovely uh, bobble board effect going on there with the doped surface. Okay, so that's the basics of our uh, doping story regarding uh, old wooden aircraft. We've got open structure with that nice taut fabric over the top and our closed wood down here, nicely waterproofed with a layer of dope and fabric. So this will last for another 100 years and uh, hopefully I won't be around to see it recovered. It's a hell of a job.